Running your own web design business can be one of the most profitable and enjoyable career paths. It allows you to be creative and work a loose schedule all while charging $2,000, 5000 even $20,000 for a single website. So this video is meant to help you get started. If you follow the steps that I lay out for you in the next few minutes, you'll be well on your way to owning a successful web design business. Step number one, probably the most obvious, you need to understand how to design and build websites. Now, luckily, there are a lot of awesome tools out there that make this way easier than you might think. So what you're going to want to do first is choose a good website builder. There are really just two that I would recommend choosing between either Webflow or Framer. Both are fairly easy to learn and allow you to create incredible websites. So I would recommend trying both of them, seeing which one suits you best and then committing to one and then learning it as well as you can. Now on top of building a web design tool, you also need to understand the basics of web design. Now luckily you don't need a college degree to understand these basics. There is endless information out there, especially right here on YouTube that you can go to learn those basics and that's going to ensure that your work looks professional because nobody's going to wanna hire you if your work doesn't look good. Now at the end of this video, I'm gonna provide you with a free guide that has all of the resources that you need, so hang tight for that. So once you've chosen your design tool, you've committed to learning the basics of web design, the only thing left for you to do is to practice, put in as much time as you can to become proficient at building websites. Step number two is creating a pre-portfolio. Now I call this a pre-portfolio because you don't have any clients yet. You don't have a real portfolio. You don't have any real work to show. And so we're gonna have to make do with what you do have. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is go over to GoDaddy, spend 20 bucks and buy a domain. This is the domain that you're going to host your portfolio site on. If you don't know what your domain should be or what the name of your business should be, just use your own name. It could be michaelscottdesign.com. That will be just fine. Once you've bought your domain, then you're gonna go to your design tool, whether that's Framer or Webflow, and you're gonna start building out your own portfolio. If you need a little help, don't be afraid to use a template. There are some free templates, some paid templates, but that's going to give you a really great start to make sure your website looks professional, even if you're lacking experience. Now, the best part about building this pre-portfolio right now is you're getting experience while building one of the most important assets for your business. So you're killing two birds with one stone. Now, if you wanna make this exercise even more effective, treat yourself or your agency like your first client. As you're building your site, think about how you would talk to yourself as the client. And this is actually going to give you a lot of insights into what it's going to be like when you actually have your first client. So once your portfolio is built, you need to showcase some of your work. Now, again, you're in a tricky spot because you haven't had any clients yet. And so you don't have any work to showcase and that's okay. What you're gonna do for right now is fill this portfolio with practice projects, redesigns, and test work. You don't have to be getting paid by a real client in order to build a website and showcase it on your portfolio. Now, the final bit of advice that I would give you when it comes to your pre-portfolio is don't overstress it. It's not going to be perfect and that's okay. Just get something up and then move on to the next step. Step three is to prepare to take on clients. There's actually a lot of logistical things that go into bringing on a new client. There's proposals and contracts and invoicing and collecting information and content and onboarding and project management and a lot of other things. But luckily right now, you don't have to worry about most of that. And for the few things that you should pay attention to on that list, you can use a tool called Hello Bonsai. This is an all-in-one tool for you as a freelancer and it's going to manage all of that stuff for you. Now I can confidently say that this is going to be the best tool to run your business on because I've been using it since 2018 and I can't imagine using anything else. I'll make sure to link to the tool down in the description. I am an affiliate and an ambassador for the tool because I've used it for so long, but if you don't wanna use my link, that's totally fine. You can just Google Hello Bonsai to find their website. The next part of preparing to bring on clients is knowing what to charge. And unfortunately, there's not a set amount that I can tell you because this is going to change and it continues to change based on location and client and project size and your experience. So the best you can do is try to understand industry standards and then price your work based on that. Now, one thing that I do here on my YouTube channel a lot is I put out surveys that outline the details of a web design project and then I ask you as a subscriber to vote on how much you would charge for that project. I love these polls because it gives you a really good idea of what the average web designer is charging and these will help you identify if you're overcharging or undercharging. So if you want to stay up to date on those industry pricing standards, all you have to do is click subscribe down below.
And the final thing that you need to prepare to take on clients is just have some sort of process. It doesn't have to be super refined. It certainly doesn't have to be automated, but you have to have a general idea of what this process is going to look like, taking a client from signing a contract to having a finished website. Now, again, there's tons of content out there on YouTube about this topic, but the guide I share with you at the end of this video is going to have a lot of really great resources that you can use. So once you've taken these three steps, you're basically ready to bring on clients. And that brings you to quite possibly the most difficult and certainly the most intimidating part of this whole process as a beginner, and that is finding new clients. Now, luckily, I have a ton of free content here on YouTube that talks about all sorts of different strategies that you can use to find clients. I even have specific videos about how to find your first client as a beginner, and I'm going to include all of that in the web design startup guide. This is a very unofficial guide. It's just a simple notion doc where I've compiled all of my favorite videos, resources, and templates. So you can basically walk through that and it will give you everything you need to get your web design business up and running. But what I want to do is end this video with the two biggest tips that I would give you as a beginner. Tip number one, don't waste too much time setting up your business. I promise you that you're going to be tempted to work on all of the behind the scenes stuff for your web design business but none of that matters if you're not putting in work to find your first clients. So go through the three steps that I shared in this video as quickly as possible and then commit yourself to finding clients. And the second and final tip that I would leave you with is design skills alone will not build a successful business. The designers who commit to learning other skills like sales and communication and marketing, those are the designers that succeed. So while it is important for you to be a good designer, it's even more important for you to understand how to find clients, how to work with clients, and how to scale a business. So if you're ready to get started, click the link below to download that free startup guide. All that I ask for in return is your email so we can stay in touch. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one.